नमस्ते दोस्तों देसी काउस डॉट इन यूट्यूब चैनल में आपका स्वागत है यह यूट्यूब चैनल अपने देसी गौवंशो को समर्पित है यहाँ पे हम इस महान देसी गौवंशो के बारे में वीडियो शेयर करेंगे लास्ट वीडियो अगर आपने नहीं देखा है तो नीचे दिया गया लिंक क्लिक कीजिए और वीडियो देखिए हमारा चैनल सब्सक्राइब कीजिए और नोटिफिकेशन के लिए बेल बटन प्रेस करें so now we come to the second part of the course called uh, the common sense approach to land and cow care uh, the part is called ecosystem literacy before we go into the ecosystem literacy part let us do a bit of a recap of what we studied in the first class that is for every uh, entity there is a function and a utility with regard to cow care what has happened is the function and the utility are different only when you uh, concentrate on the function or the function and the utility should be the same for the any enterprise that you are trying to do with the cow and land to be profitable or uh, sustainable so then now we'll come into the uh, next topic of ecosystem literacy when you hear the word literacy it means that uh, to know to read and write is what you mean by saying literacy so kerala is supposed to be the first fully literate, literate state in india that means almost all majority of the inmates in uh, the uh, citizens in mean the people in kerala know to read and write their mother tongue then what is meant by ecosystem literacy ecosystem literacy means your ability to read the the uh, landscape when you see a land you may see something around you the ecosystem around you you should be able to read it what is it say and this a person who is the most literate person may not be ecosystem literate he may be literate in their way he may be able to read books write books but he needn't be ecosystem literate how he behaves with this ecosystem before going into that real topic we should we should understand that we ecosystem is something there and you are standing out no a human being is a part of the ecosystem it's not that you are out and ecosystem is separate so you should know how to behave in an ecosystem so one by one we will see now there is uh, people understand that now we have to go back to the organic farming so in the organic movement it is built on a fundamental principle which says the birth right of all living things is health this law is true for the soil the plants the animal and man this health of these four is one connected chain that is you have the soil from the soil grows the plant from the plant comes the human being and the animals so it is a chain that is how it is so any weakness or defect in the health of any earlier link in the chain any defect in the link before the uh, which the link which you are now then the any uh, the weakness or defect in the health of any earlier link in the chain is carried on to the next and succeeding links until it reaches the last namely man that is any problem with the soil will be will lead to a problem in the plant which will lead to a problem in, in the person who consumes the plant man or animals that is how it is linked see the how uh, one basic thing that we have to understand is the widespread vegetable and animal pest that you see and diseases are evidence of the great failure of health in the plant and animal links of the chain you may be seeing pest in the plants and the animals it is not it is because of something wrong with that link that is you know if it is in the soil uh, then there is something wrong with the uh, there is something wrong with the plant there is something wrong with the soil if there is something wrong with the animal it means that there is something wrong with the plant it too there is some ill health so one question that i would like to teach each one of you to understand is see now there is a lot of cry against inorganic pesticides you are using lot of pesticides but you are okay with organic pesticides it doesn't make sense to me because pesticide is one that kills whether it is organic or inorganic it kills the pest so then you have to you have to be literate enough to understand why the pest come to understand more garbage brings the pest or the pest brings the garbage it is always the garbage that brings the pest that means if there is a pest attack somewhere on the animal 
or the plan, it means that it is a garbage. There is something wrong. It is not healthy. So by killing the pest, how are you going to make the animal or the plant healthy? Any product that comes out of that plant by applying an inorganic or organic pesticide is not a healthy product. The person who is going to consume that particular thing, whether you use the organic or inorganic pesticide, the fruit that you, you consume from a heavily infested plant with pest, if you consume that plant, you are bound to be ill healthily. So uh, there is no point in uh, saying that I have applied organic pesticides. There should be no pesticides. It is your ignorance or uh, the lack of knowledge regarding the management of soil that is causing the pest attack in your plant. So as a consequence of this failure in the plant and the animal links, there will be impairment of health in the human population that is the problem. So then the human person who is consuming that product also will show symptoms of ill health. So this general failure in the last three links, which are the last three links, the plant, the animals and the man, is to be attributed to the failure in the first link, the soil. The undernourishment of the soil is at the root of all. So undernourishment here we see uh, in at least in 1986, in all these schools, it was taught that soil is inert. That means soil has no life. But now it is wrong. It has been understood that soil has life. Soil is not something, it is someone. Previously it was thought of as something. No, now we cannot say it is someone. It is something, it is someone. That means you have to take care of the soil the same way you take care of yourself. You have to feed it, you have to protect it, you have to nourish it. That is your responsibility. So, when you say undernourishment, it means lack of life in the soil. So there is lack of life in the soil leads to lack of life in the plant, lack of life in the, uh, the uh, life in the animals, and the lack of life in the human beings. So organic crop and livestock production focuses on building the soil organic matter and biology to create a sustainable dynamic environment for producing a healthy food and feed. Feed means for the animals, food for the human beings. So it is based on how much life is there in the soil? So the life in the soil means you have to provide it food. What is the food that you provide to the uh, living beings in the soil? It is organic matter. So it, everything is based on how much organic matter your soil has. You have to keep on giving it to the soil so that you maintain the life in the soil. So, in the, but in the, in the present organic farming or the conventional farming, what is being done? Is, as a consequence of the way the farming is being done, the national car or organic carbon, which was 3, has gone down to 0.3. That means the more you farm, you are diminishing the resources in the soil. As I discussed in the previous one, in the conventional farming, you, sorry, in the holistic farming, you do think in a way that when I take a product from the soil, the resources shouldn't diminish. But in the conventional method, you are not bothered about the how much resources there. I want to produce as quick as possible. That is how the principle comes. So here what has happened is the, the, the traditional or the conventional method so far we have been following has reduced our organic carbon from 3 to 0.3. That is how the studies show. Then the rainfall has become ineffective. That means even it rains, you have a flood down. What is in effective rainfall? Effective rainfall is how much, not how much it rained, how much went down into the soil. So by the present uh, way we are farming, we lost our organic carbon, we lo even if it is a cyclone, you are losing the water, it is going to the COD. And another very important thing that you have to understand is, each half a ton of food, that is half a ton of food is the requirement of a person in a year, to produce it, we are producing more than 10 tons of eroding soil. That is the way you produce food now, you are losing your soil. That means the operation is successful, but the patient is bleeding. That's the present situation, how we are doing the farming methods. See, I am not trying to point out some mistakes, but we, I am trying to show you that we have to become ecosystem literate to understand what is happening and do the things that has to be corrected. So, in the real organic farming, on the real farming or in the holistic farming, farming fertility to the soil by increasing the soil biology is the priority by using, how do you get it done? You need livestock as the tool. In this case, we, need, we should be using cows as the tool to build fertility to the soil. 
and from a fertile soil that is you are not getting from any soil from a fertile soil which that is our prime aim to make a fer soil fertile to give life to the soil from a living soil from that someone we will get a healthy herd and from the healthy herd you get the real milk the, from the healthy soil you get the real water real fruits real nuts grains flowers etc i am sorry to use the word real because uh, in the coming uh, slides where the mineral cycle comes i explain to you why i call it real because even though we see an apple today it is not having the nutrients it, it was it once had that means previously if you uh, uh, an apple a day keeps the doctor away now to get the same vitamin a from an apple you have to eat seven apples so that means it is one apple is not real real means an apple a day keeps the doctor away the nutrients that was there once upon a time to get that back to the apple you need to have livestock on the soil <coughs> moving on the soil that is here in our case we are using because so in this in the sustainable farming the wealth that will ultimately sustain your business community and nation is that derived from plants growing on regenerating soils not on degenerating soils and a dying soil a soil which is something not someone won't grow enough to repay the last year's loan you have a loan but if you want to repay it there should be someone on your soil not something in the soil and there are certain things so you know there are uh, the major thing that i will be focusing here is the principles not the techniques there are certain principles that you have to follow that you should be knowing about the four basic processes at work in an ecosystem that allows us to quickly gauge the health of the land there should be some method by which we should be able to gauge the function of the land the life of the land only when these four processes are functioning in a farm are we getting real milk real grains real vegetables real fruits and real water only when the four ecosystem processes are functioning we will be able to get the real thing. and the four ecosystem processes are the solar energy the mineral cycle the water cycle and community dynamics we will look into each of these three things i'll tell you once more solar energy the mineral cycle the water cycle and community dynamics let us first look at the water cycle that is what is happening to the water that you get free from the top the water that falls free on your land what is happening it is only falling down you have to look at your soil when you purchase a land what is happening to the water that is falling there is it falling and being washed away taking the soil with it or is it soaking down and then so that is what we mean by water cycle then again by with the help of the sunlight it when it hits the top of the plants by the process of transpiration the water which has gone down will be taken up by the plants and given back to the atmosphere so that is called the water cycle is this cycle in place in your land or is it just going away riding away over your soil so in this uh, when you start, uh, understand about water cycle you should know the main resource that you have in your farm with respect to water what is the main resource you have nothing but rainfall rainfall is your main resource free you are getting every year as monsoon or reverse monsoon depending on the place where you are see what is effective rainfall it is the rain that falls on the surface of the soil soaks in and then leaves the soil only by two ways which are the two ways by flowing through the soil to the perennial flow that is goes down hits the bottom and then flows through the perennial floors that is through the stream or something you get it out or by transpiration through green growing plants it is go down taken by the roots and then goes up through the uh, leaves by the process of transpiration that is what i am showing you in this video in this uh, particular uh, slide see see below you see the water taken up by the roots and then it goes up and given out by the uh, leaves by the help of the sunlight that is falling on the leaves by the process this happens so these two are the process by which the water uh, cycles and then in a square meter of forested or heavily planted area around 3 liters of water will be that water evaporate transpired in an air, in the air each day 3 liters per square meter this much happens so this leads to an uh, this also if it is proper you get a rain other than the monsoon 
but if you don't have anything on the top of your soil, then you miss it. So that is exactly what you are missing now. Since you have made cities and you have made your land bare, there is no water cycle happening in your place. So then how can we expect rain? So you just see these two pictures. You have a picture on the left and you have a picture on the right. In the picture on the left, there is no water cycle because it's a bare soil. Whatever water falls is taking away the soil. It's a bare soil. But whatever water falls on the right side, where it is fully covered, it will penetrate down. So a bare soil, you don't expect any water cycle there. See, when the radiation from the sun, radiant energy from the sun comes to the land, you have an area where it is bare, that you, as you saw in the previous slide. What happens when it hits on that soil? It heats up it. And if there is any water, it gets evaporated and then heats up the soil. But if there is a plant which will harvest the rain, so sorry, the harvest the radiant energy of the sun naturally produces food. So by photosynthesis. So the three ways by which the sun radiant energy hits your your uh, earth is three ways. There is one by reflection, it hits. If there is nothing covered, it reflects back, so it heats up the atmosphere or it can be absorbed, so it heats up the soil or it can uh, help in photosynthesis and transpiration. So, a keeping a soil bare is the start of degradation. That means, one, one, the moment you get uh, the soil, you land, you should understand, it is not something, it is someone, so I have to protect it. Immediately put something on the soil or make something grow on the soil. You keeping it exposed means you lose your water cycle. It disturbs the water cycle. See, it disturbs the water cycle when you keep a soil bare and then increases the heat of the ground and the air around and then the topsoil erodes in the next rain. This is how a fertile land becomes a desert. This is three phases in it. You are keeping the soil bare and what happens? It disturbs the local water cycle, it heats up the soil and then this topsoil erodes. And that is how you produce. You can reverse it easily. It is not something you can do. Cover this one. Everything starts to come back. That is because the basic thing I am trying to put into your mind is soil is not something. It is someone. Take care of the way you take care of yourselves. See, see this picture. You have on the left side you have water that is muddy and you have a clear here. So if the water that is excess water, I mean you got excess rain, suddenly a uh, if a big increase bout of rainfall fell on your land and the water that flows out of your land if it is having the muddy color it means it is taking away your soil and if the water that is coming out of your soil should always be clear it simply means that it has not taken anything from your soil that is what it means so you see this is a, a, a land where it rained and suddenly there was a bit of ponding and the water got accumulated here why is it? Why didn't the water go down? Or why didn't it flow away? Because there is a pond form it, there may be a depression there. But why did it go down? It's simply because of compaction. It is like concrete because, because of your practices. It has become compacted. Now see this slide. You, the, why the water um, uh, was accumulating or the surface ponding was there? Because you have a compacted layer here. And that compacted layer is not allowing the water to go down. And even that compacted layer is not allowing the seed which had sprouted and was trying to come out because of the compacted layer, it cannot come out. But it is all because it is missing a tool which had come into the coming. That you need only a tool, right? as I mentioned about the, where there is no movement of cows or where there is excess movement of cows. Then it is not managed properly only. Either a place is not managed by cows, when I mean, uh, no cows are there or not properly managed by the cows. That is the place where usually such things happen. See, the key is in how much rain falls. It is what happens after it falls. If it is flowing away like this, even if it is a cyclone, it is not going to be any good for it. Then comes, so, now what we have had, uh, finished is the, of the four, water cycle is over. In water cycle is, you should not have a bare soil. That is how the certification or uh, soil losing is what it starts when it is having an exposed to soil. Shouldn't be there. Then how do you understand the mineral cycle? See, uh, the cycling of nutrients from plants to other organisms to soil and back to the plants. That is from the plants it has to go to the soil and from the soil back to the plants. And dark green 
plan color is an indicator of an healthy middle surface. You may have planted some rice and you see it's not green. And then you may putting some chemicals and then you make it green. That means you don't have the mineral cycle performing on that side. Sorry. That is why you get yellowish color discoloration or no proper green color happens. See in this uh, uh, picture you see in that mineral cycle how it is every tree sheds its leaves. And the leaf falls as you see here. The leaves are fallen here. But where is the yesterday's leaves? Someone has swept it. That means you have interrupted the mineral cycle. See the, see the other picture, yesterday's uh, uh, leaves are there. But as days progress, the life in the soil will eat up the previous days and slowly, slowly, slowly the soil starts to build up. And that is the food of the living things in the soil, the leaves that fall down. So that is how the cycling takes place. The leaf has to fall down and that has to be eaten by the life in the soil, taken by the roots, that is how the system should be done. See, in this picture, even though the whole area doesn't, it's green, but not dark green. But you see the place where uh, Dr. Srikala is standing, that is a dark green area. And you see below the tree, that is also dark green. That means those areas you have a proper mineral cycle. Why below the tree? The leaves that fell from the tree has done the cycling. The mineral cycle is perfect. And here you know what happened? There was, when we went inside and found out there was an ant hill there, where the mineral cycle was formed. They are done at foreign and that the uh, ants were in work there and that is the place where you saw that uh, green color. That means greenness is dark green color is an indication of the uh, what do you call that functioning in the second. You just see this video. In this video uh, you come to understand that there is an Indian Institute of Nutrition in uh, India where they study the min uh, vitamins uh, and minerals in the food that we consume. For the past three years, it's a latest, uh, published last year, 2017, it is understood that there has been a major decrease in nutrient content in the fruit plants, in the vegetables and the fruits. Just I'm telling you three years, and if you compare to the previous, it has gone more than even 50, in certain things it has gone even more than 70% reduction in nutrients as compared to uh, before the uh, world war. That much reduction is there in the nutrients. And this is uh, it's a big video, but I've cut just to show you that, uh, just to make you aware that uh, uh, there is a reduction in nutrients. और अब हम जिस खबर का विश्लेषण करेंगे वो आपके पूरे परिवार की सेहत से जुड़ी हुई खबर है आपको जानकर हैरानी होगी कि आपके भोजन की थाली में से जरूरी पोषक तत्व गायब होते जा रहे हैं यानी आप जो खाना खा रहे हैं उससे आपका पेट तो भर सकता है लेकिन पोषण नहीं हो सकता नेशनल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ न्यूट्रिशन ने इसी वर्ष एक फूड कॉम्पोजिशन टेबल तैयार किया है जिसके आधार पर इंडियन डायटिक एसोसिएशन यानी आई ने भारतीय थाली से जुड़ा एक रिसर्च किया इस रिसर्च के मुताबिक पिछले 30 वर्षों से भारतीय भोजन की ताकत और उसके पोषक तत्व लगातार कम हो रहे हैं आपने अक्सर बड़े बुजुर्गों को यह कहते हुए सुना होगा कि पुराने जमाने में भोजन की बात ही कुछ और हुआ करती थी हर चीज शुद्ध होती थी और आपका खाना शरीर को लगता था बड़े बुजुर्गों की यह बात अब सच साबित हो रही है आई का रिसर्च इस बात को भी साबित करता है कि तीस वर्ष पहले खाने में शुद्धता की गारंटी आज के मुकाबले कहीं ज्यादा थी and what happens when this happens it leads to hidden hunger hidden hunger means is a major public health problem caused by the lack of essential vitamins and minerals in the diet you may you might have had your tummy full but you lacked in nutrients so that leads to many many nut uh, nutritional deficiencies diseases it can even lead to diabetes cancer many things come out of just because you don't have a nutrient in your Often the signs of this formation of malnutrition are hidden, as individuals may look all right but suffer extremely negative impacts on health and well-being. It has been found out that white, vitamin and mineral deficiency this will lead to an overactive endocrine glands and thyroid. And I'm just showing you how that deficiency leads to cancer or degenerative diseases. First, it will show an endocrine gland overactiveness and thyroid. And then loss of calcium, even if it is not corrected, it leads to loss of calcium, iron, and iodine, you know, osteoporosis and many sorts of things. And then you have goiter, anemia, diabetes, paralysis, gastric ulcers. Even then, if you have not corrected, it goes to accumulation of steroids, leading to, then it will be expressed as degenerative diseases like gallstones, cataracts, heart blocks, and cancers. 
See now you have Lordstown clinics, you have cataract clinics, you have heart block, heart clinics, and cancer clinics. It is only a simple thing. It's because your soil is lacking the life. It is lacking life in leading to lack of minerals, leading to all these few genetic diseases. See, even now, the obesity. You see, obese people in this because it is an indication of malnutrition. It is not an indication of overnutrition. It is only an indication of junk food. That you are eating something, but it is why it is called junk. junk. No nutrients other than fill. So, we have now just see, I am not going into a PhD level of uh, I mean, I'm sharing knowledge. It is just an, a minimum that a person farming should know. What is water cycle? What is mineral cycle? How can you gauge it? That is only what I am trying to say. Then uh, comes the energy flow. Energy flow is from where? This is not a cycle, it is a flow. The other one was mineral cycle. The other one was water cycle. It is not cycle. It is a flow of energy from the top, from the sun. How is it utilized by you? That is how it matters. So the basis of all life depends on the plant's ability to through photosynthesis to convert sunlight energy to edible form, so does every economy. Then and, and how much it is able to transform into an edible form we depends on which or, um, uh, as a result of which the economy, every country and civilization. That is how a, every country's economy or the country develops. Only based on how much you are able to convert the solar energy into edible things. See, you see two pictures. One is you have the solar panel, which is now uh, government is even giving subsidy for it. That is to convert the solar energy to electricity. But see the other one. This thing also is converting it. It's more, much and more important than this energy that you are converting to the solar panels. Because this also automatically moves with the sun. It also, if the sunlight is more, it curls. Many things to do it. without any technology it, it, it is happening. So this is the natural solar panel and this is the your technological solar panels. And give more priority. No subsidy, nothing is given to this. You may be getting subsidy for this, but understand this is more important than this. If this is not functioning, even if you have electricity, what will you eat? So that is where the importance comes. So if this is not a cycle, it is the flow. So the sun's radiation has three potential pathways when it hits our planet. I told you before, it can be transformed into photosynthesis by plants. The more it is transformed by photosynthesis in the plants, the more successful you are. That is how you gauge how your the nation's prosperity is dependent on how much radiant energy is transformed into food by the process of photosynthesis by the plants. It can be transformed into evaporation when it heats the soil. Heats of the soil and evaporates. Or it can be transformed into heat. The second and the third, if it is happening, that, that nation is going to grow. But if the first thing happens, that will be the richest nation. So this is one thing that this is the, only if these two are there, the second and third, there is no flow. Only in the first one there is flow. And I'll show you how that flow happens. See, in this video, you will uh, come to know that when the solar uh, energy falls on the leaf, by the process of photosynthesis, it creates sugars in the um, uh, leaves. With sunlight and water, perform photosynthesis. They pull in carbon from the air and turn it into carbohydrates, sugars. Then they pump some of those sugars down through their roots to feed microorganisms who use that carbon to build soil. Voila, carbon moved. Plants pump it in and soil stores it. Nature's living technology is amazing. When the sunlight hits the leaves, by the process of food, the photosynthesis, food is being produced. And once, the, as I showed in the video, once the food is being produced, the about 40 to 50 percent of the sugars that is produced goes down into the soil. For what? To feed someone in the soil. Not there is someone in the soil. So 50 percent goes to them. And why do you want to feed them? 
they have to process the food from the surroundings and provide it back to the plants. So this happens. So and then after this is done, it is taken up and you produce uh, fruits and everything and all the plant grows. So for that, you, the plant f feeds the soil microbes. So that is how it's a flow. It is from the sunlight, it hits the leaves and it flows into the soil to feed the microbes. This flow should take place. So every inch of soil in your land, if it is covered by something living, it is pumping carbon down. That means you want your soil carbon to increase, it is pumping carbon down. There shouldn't be any bare soil, there should be something growing in your plant. Don't see weed as something weed. It is also a plant that is pumping carbon down. Everywhere something should be growing. The more it is covered with living things, the more carbon is being pumped into the soil. Make use of it. Don't eat a soil bare. Energy should be flowing down. And here, as the soil temperature increases, as a result of sunlight directly falling on the hitting the planet, it is then it is 70 degree, hundred percent of the moisture that is present in the soil is being used for plants. As it increases to 100, 100 degree Fahrenheit, 15 percent of the moisture only you get, the rest goes as evaporation. And it further increases to 130, 160, by 160, soil writing a die. That means it has become something, not someone, someone has gone. So that is what happens when you have uh, the sunlight directly. That is, it should hit on the leaf only. It should not hit on the uh, planet directly. That means it is causing damage to your soil, and it will never become a prosperous farming. And then uh, you see this video. In this video, again, it simply it's showing you that the more life, a soil which has no life. If you are able to give back life to it by growing something or covering it, you will have everything back on it. Life will come back and you will see different things growing on your soil. All the damage we have done is we made a bare soil somewhere. That is how we can. It is a cancer that is how it spread. Now it was bald here, now it has become fully bald. That is the problem. So we can reverse it by just covering your soil. I, the, the best would be with a living plant, at least with a uh, uh, organic microbes. 500 million years ago, these microbes brought plants onto the land. The microbes provided minerals and water in exchange for carbon sugars produced by the plants through photosynthesis. This resulted in a terrestrial explosion of life. More life meant more excretions and deaths, which meant more food and nutrients for decomposers, and all soil life, known as the soil food web. This increased the abundance and biodiversity of ecosystems and turned barren land into fertile soil. That's one that is called mulching. That is, one, that is another option is co soil covering the soil surface. Then, so the three things that we have covered, which are two are cycles, that is the water cycle, the mineral cycle, then now we state the energy flow. Now we have a community dynamics. Community dynamics is nothing but biodiversity or succession. That means how different types of plants are growing. And after some time, some go, some, uh, uh, many others may come in. And again it may go, it may come in. Like you know, you disturb the soil. You did a bit of tilling. And then you try to plant something on the land. You will see immediately weeds coming and covering up. It's a dynamic of the soil that soil wants it to be the, the as per the rule that uh, of the land. This soil has to be covered. Immediately you see uh, weeds coming up. That is to protect it. That is, it's a dynamics, dynamic process there. Uh, in another way, I will explain. Uh, in Jaipur, what we saw is uh, it was a bare soil. We used the cows on that land. Then suddenly we started seeing some grasses coming up. And then a bushy uh, plant came which bear fruits. And then it established well. And beneath that, lot of grass, everything started to grow. Then suddenly, Justicia uh, Adatoda, another uh, plant started to come there. Then you saw from to eat the fruit, birds came. And after birds started eating it, it started spreading the same seeds everywhere. And then that bird which came after eating some fruit, the major thing that they ate was the neem seeds. They ate the neem fruits, came there, passed the stool, and later on what we saw is through that bushy plant, that thorny plant, neem started coming. 
and then that neem, so you, so what all you saw, the dynamics you saw, no? initially it was bare, then you put the cows, slowly the grass came, then this bushy, fruity, uh, this, uh, not just bushy, it's thorny, uh, plant came, bare we call it there, and with uh, a sweet fruit, and then you saw that justicia establishing there, because as the uh, mass, biomass came, it, uh, it created a different uh, environment there, facilitating that uh, justicia to grow. And then as both came together and within a uh, flow of energy, flow of water, that area again developed, a uh, bird came there, put the seed, facilitated that, uh, that area, facilitated the germination of that particular fruit seed and then you see, then you are seeing that neem coming up. And then when you see, it progress, progress, the neem spread and you lost the other things went up. So that is what is told here. A species will move into an environment when the conditions are suitable for its establishment and it will move out of that environment when the conditions become suitable for its unsuitable for its reproduction. That is initially the thorny king came and then when the neem came it, it became unsuitable for it and it went. Even cactus also which came first from the cactus bush you can see the neem coming and the cactus is coming. That is called the dynamics. That is the dynamic of action that is taking place there and biodiversity. That is how it is. That means to be more precise, in nature there is no competition that we have been taught. There is no competition in nature. There will be no fight for any nutrient stuff. They will only support each other. That is what you see in the forest. Many different, the adjacent trees not the same. They are living in harmony. That harmony is what you see. There is only cooperation or collaboration. There is no so called what you have been put into your mind that there is competition. Don't worry, nothing is there. See, I can prove it. You have a bare soil, no, sorry, soil where we have planted and plant in a monocrop. Just look outside your cropland. You will see many things growing there. And in that area, all are seeding, all are again growing, no pest attack on them, but you have put pumped a lot of pest, pest uh, uh, repellents on your farmland. But there is no pest there. There is, there is no competition and they are living harmony, harmony. That is called community dynamics. There may be many pests coming there, but that there is a dynamics. Birds will come, they will be eaten, and the system goes on. That is what you mean by saying community dynamics. See these two types of soil. There are different types of birds. You see this here itself. What all types of things are there? All are growing, all are seeding, again growing. What's the problem there? No competition. But here you see, in this you see a lying crop, you are the crop that you want, you don't want anything to grow here. Let me just ask you one funny question. There is nothing growing here, no? So that means it has been eaten up by a pest. Which is that pest which removed the things that is growing in between these two groups? Have you tried any pest repellent on them? Which is the pest that removed the things that are supposed to grow in between these two plants? Can you know? Does anyone know which is the pest that ate up this? It is nothing but human beings. You planted, the same human being planted this and the same human being removed the, uh, the plants that would have been here. Are we trying any pest repellent on that particular entity, human beings? Is the most difficult or the most harmful pest that you have in the ecosystem. We have to manage us. You, you needn't worry about the other pest. The most dangerous pest in the ecosystem is human beings. That is what who has eaten up, who has made the soil bare. A pest is never, we will never do it. But everywhere it has been bare, made bare by that pest, human being. That is the thing. So you see the first one: no pest, no competition. Where there is biodiversity. See here, garbage brings pest. This mode of culture farming, this particular plants that are growing here is garbage. That is why the pest has come to will come to attack it. That means it's not, it's not healthy. There is no water cycle here. There is no carbon cycle here. No energy flow in between here. Then how can it be a healthy plant? It will be attacked by pest. See, this is a uh, in near to Pune, where we have gone once. This is you see the wheat plantation here, and see in between there are weeds growing. This is biodiversity. Where is the competition here? You have to space it properly. Permit others also to grow so that the there is harmony there. This is a uh, uh, land where we had planted. My my friend uh, Mr. Anjum had planted Urudai. You see, in between the rows, 
you see the beads are growing and how, what did he do he just saw that the weeds don't grow above his urit plant so that sunlight is not blocked so what did he do see the second picture he just managed it by clipping it and that so what happens is energy flow is all over his land there is biodiversity all over his land there is no pest attack in his farm is because of the biodiversity that happened there so the real capital for sustainable farming is an advance in communal dynamics an increase in energy flow communal dynamics means different types of things. different types of things means different types of uh, the exude uh, of the food that is processed is different different types and when it all goes down into the soil the soil bacteria gets a different types of food and they all will be taken and each and everything that grows on the top will have sufficient nutrients I'll give a, a, a easy example that you can understand. Five friends coming from home, they bring food from their house. Each person is bringing different different things. And when they in the afternoon when they sit together to eat, one person may be come with dosa, and that person might have come with chapati. Different different things. The same thing happens to them. Five different types of plants cooking different types of food, and the microflora down gets them. Different different types, and so that they will be able to make much more highly nutrient food on top. That is how the thing. There is no competition in nature. It is only man-made competition. It's no competition with respect to all living entities other than human beings. There is no competition. Everything is permitted. A pest, a, a, a pest will attack only an unhealthy plant. A predator will eat only its destined prey. It will not simply attack anyone. It is destined prey. Why it is destined? It has to do it. Then, a bank cannot or even inherited property may not be able to provide this capital. That is a healthy soil. That is a soil which has these four ecosystem processes functioning. The mineral cycle, the water cycle, the communal dynamics and the energy flow is the biggest capital that or the most sustainable capital that you can think of. And another thing that you should understand, nature works as a whole. In order to have an efficient water or mineral cycle or adequate energy flow, an ecosystem must have communities of living organisms. For living organisms to thrive, they need effective energy flow to feed them. A water cycle that supplies adequate moisture and a mineral cycle that supplies vital nutrients. All four processes work together to create a healthy or unhealthy ecosystem. If these four are working together, it is a healthy ecosystem. If they are not functioning, gone. One, anything changing one will affect the whole thing. No communal dynamics, that means the soil will be exposed, no water cycle, no energy. They are, it is just like you have a room with four windows looking through different, different windows. You are looking into the same room. That is all. See, so in farming or in keeping animals on a farm, your number one enemy is the bare soil. You keep a soil bare, it is the start of cancer to the soil. It is your number one enemy. Don't keep the soil bare. And natural biological systems of trees, shrubs, I'm talking about the biodiversity. Trees, shrubs, grasses and other types of flora serve a number of important functions that is why I told in the first class each has a function you may not be knowing you have to find out their function their function as with respect to if you are a responsible farmer you should know the functions but all of them serve a number of important functions including cycling water protecting soil from solar radiation it is protecting the soil from so solar radiation how it will hit on the leaves and instead of solar radiation heating up the soil, it produces sweet exudates. It produces food. That is what these three uh, things do. That means, one and well, they, uh, with respect to cow, I told their function is to graze. With poultry, also I told their function is their eating habit. The same way, what is the function of the trees? What is the function of the grass? What is the function of the shrubs? Everything that grow on soil. What is the function? It, it helps in cycling water and protecting soil from solar radiation. That is one of the major functions of them. 
water cycle, the mineral cycle, solar flow, everything happens because of anything that is growing on this soil. Don't see it as a weed. Everything has a function. There is nothing called waste in this soil. The Creator has not made a mistake that you should understand. If you have faith in the Creator, understand that He does not make a mistake. He has a function. It is your, your right to know its function. But one thing function you can understand is they produce the, the water cycle, you need water, they help in this protecting the soil from solar, solar emissions. And then provide you with superb nutrient, real food, real water, everything comes. Only if the four ecosystem function. And that can function only if there is no bare soil. So in the nature's farming, what are the characteristics of nature's farming? Mother earthy, a mother cow can feed its young. You need to worry. If it is, if it has a pro, uh, ability or if it is permitted to perform its function of grazing, it can easily feed its young. The same way Mother Earth can feed its young. You needn't worry about it. You needn't worry about the exploding population. As long as Mother Earth has permitted, without the permission of the Mother Earth, nobody can grow, live, or give be given birth on this earth. Nobody can be born on this earth without the permission of Mother Earth. If there is Mother Earth that's not permitted, it will be born, it will maybe get aborted or it may come out with a handicap. It will never be to function. Mother Earth knows to take care of whoever grows, whoever is living on the earth. You don't get carried away by the increasing population. No. Mother Earth knows. The way you are living, you will be confined in a city and if you say how will I eat, it's right. But if you take the Mother Earth, it's not just your city. You don't see city, that is called reductionist thinking. I have only a city. It is full. The full earth is yours. And surely each and every person that is living in this soil, in this earth, the Mother Earth knows to feed. Without its permission, nobody will be born. That is how earth is. So, Mother Earth never attempts to farm without livestock. You see. In you look at the forest. You the forest is nothing without livestock there. You cannot have a forest without livestock. Because every plant needs the rubbing, the, uh, the pruning of the uh, herbivores. Then only they can grow more. So there is, you cannot think of uh, anything growing on soil without the help of livestock. Mother Earth never does it. It raises mixed crops. You see biodiversity in nature. You see, it preserves the soil. There will be no soil wash. The water coming out of a Pakka forest will never be a muddled. It will never have mud mixed with it. It will be clear, crystal clear. Rows of growth and decay balance one another. There is no waste. Mix up animal and vegetable waste converted to humus. Everything that is in the soil will be go back, cycled back and it will be converted to humus. There is no waste in nature. Greatest care will be taken by the nature's farming to store the rainfall. There will be effective rainfall there. Uh, that is the one of the principles in the nature's farming. And then in sustainable farming, I would like to summarize that in sustainable farming, you need animals. And in that sustainable farming, uh, it, it depends on your ability, your knowledge, or your literacy, your literate power. Two, it, it is based on our ability to harvest sunlight, rain, air, dung and urine. Or whichever animal you are keeping, it's dung and urine. Your ability to harvest these four things is what means sustainability. That means sunlight, only shadow should fall on the earth. Something, something green should be grown which will harvest the sunlight. It will take the energy flow. And then rain, it should be effective rainfall. And then air, that means proper, uh, the, uh, the, the, the air should be able to move. That means the, the, the soil should be permeable for the air, the water, everything to move inside. And dung and moving, that's moving cows or moving livestock. Your sustainability depends on your capacity or your capability in harvesting these four things. Now in the, in the farming, this does not happen. And you cannot think of farming with just dung and urine. You need animals coming there in your land and putting dung and urine. Then only you can go. To understand the community dynamics better, 
you should actually look at the or you should know which is the one and only reliable university in the world where you will be just looking at itself or just observing it you will be able to learn everything that is happening in the nature or the minimum things that you should be knowing you can get by just observing that is the forest the forest is the one and the only reliable university you have in the world if you look at the forest you see sunlight if you enter the proper forest you will never see sunlight falling on the land everywhere something is there and the adjacent plant will not be the same they are growing in harmony there is no competition there and the water whatever falls it is fully covered even all the leaves that are there is being cycled composting also is taking place there you don't need to do any composting composting is happening there you need to make it happen and then comes uh, the different types of life that is uh, if you just move the uh, soil and if you put your hand there you will see the temperature that is so cool that means that temperature where in facilitating the uh, activity of life and then you have different types of large animals living there bison lions tigers different things moving around elephants all moving around all living peacefully you don't see anyone go in the forest department feeding the uh, for, um, purchasing fertilizer for the forest how does the forest fertilize it fertilizes itself forest department is not fertilizing the animal husbandry department is not feeding the uh, livestock in the forest it is happening itself so that is an inbuilt model and even you do a uh, farming you are just mimicking what is happening in the forest that because you learned those things by observing the forest so that is the only reliable uh, or the minimum uh, education that you should get is you should at least know understand how understand our forest plants so from that you should have community dynamics to learn community dynamics how that community dynamics is helping in the solar cycle solar uh, energy flow the mineral cycle we don't see any plant in the forest which is not green there is no question of uh, it is not dark green it is uh, light green nothing like that everywhere mineral cycle is functioning everywhere water cycle is functioning everywhere solar flow is there and this pakka community dynamics in this will happen in terms of the tropicals no, but when you go that. towards the northern hemisphere no. Where you will the, find uh, the snow and the plants. See, there also, see, in the in the snowy areas also there is a forest. It's not it's a bare soil. No, there also it's a forest. Himalayas is full of forest only, full of trees. No, when we go to the western countries, no, it's side. temperate forest. You have temperate. But forest. the ecosystem there is a bit different, I guess. See, that will be different simply there. No, see, even in India, if you see uh, the northern part or majority of the areas you see uh, or i'll give you an easy way to understand that is there are places where we have smaller cows and there are places where we have very have bigger cows so this is dependent on the brittleness of the soil that is what you call brittleness brittleness means how humidity is there in your soil in your area the more so in a 365 day uh, year if the Uh, humidity is throughout the year or it is only for 4 months of rain and then it is dry or half or 3/4 uh, depending on that you gauge the brittleness a highly brittle soil is where you have the uh, humidity is for a lesser period of the year and the least brittle land is where you have humidity throughout the year. and how to gauge it easily understand it by looking at the cow itself you can understand in a brittle environment and you taking the non brittle environment from the non brittle you have the smallest cow and as the cow's height increases depending on the, you should think of the native breed of each place local breed depending on the brittleness scale only the height of the cow the size of the cow increases so you see the majority of the uh huge animals are in the northern us and you have the, where this hayadri here is where this non brittle areas we have smaller ones and different parts of the uh, india you see so it is based on the brittleness that it changes why is it that you have a smaller breed in uh, non brittle areas and a bigger breed in the uh, brittle areas is because in a brittle area the grass that is growing there 
will not fall down as, as the growing season is over because the humidity goes. It will remain dry. So it has to be laid down and you need high impact to lay it down. So you are given a heavy impact. In the non metal area, it, it, because of the humidity, it naturally falls, but it needs only little impact. So you have a smaller impact. So by looking at the size of the cow, you can gauge the brittleness of your skin. But whether it is brittle or non brittle, you need livestock on there. Because it to make the mineral cycle complete, you need the livestock there. They have to put it down. Then only that your soil, the grass will touch the ground to be acted upon by the soil. Regarding the topic that uh, we are connected, you can uh, ask me now. Prabhuji, I wanted to ask you, you have taken up this topic of ecosystem literacy. How is it related to cow keeping or my farm activities? See, the first topic that we took was we need to understanding the holistic, the holistic, what is holistic farming? In holistic farming, what we are trying to say is everything that you manage on your farm, be it the plants, the so called weeds, or the animals, you should know their functions. And only when you know their functions, you will be able to manage them. Otherwise, you will be utilitarian thoughts. You will only think of the utility. And to make it sustainable, you have should have the utility and the, the function and the utility should be the same. So, to know that you should be able to understand the land, when you see your land, you should be able to gauge it. What, where is my land? What type of uh, situation my land is? How am I going to manage it? What are the things am I going to grow here? What will happen if I grow that? What will happen if I don't grow this? What will happen if I don't bring the animals in? To know, that, to, to be aware of what to do, you should be literate with respect to the ecosystem. And another thing that I have been stressing is, you are a part of the ecosystem. So you should know how you should behave, what all you should see, how do you get, you see there is rain suddenly comes and if there is water, water going with uh, clear water passing out, then you have to be okay, my soil is not going, oh some soil is going, that means it has become muddy, that means some soil is going, there is uh, some damage I have done, so you should not repeat it. Or you see sunlight uh, hitting directly on this uh, soil, that means you will lose the water. So you should at least be uh, um, literate enough to understand that. How your soil gets damaged is by keeping a soil bare. That means there should not be any space between two plants. Two plants doesn't mean two trees. A tree and a grass. Anything. Two between two plants. Edges should be more. A bit more edges between plants. That is what is uh, what I'm trying to say. So unless and until you are not able to read the ecosystem. How can you manage your land or the cows? Because the cows is a part of the ecosystem, you are part of the ecosystem, the plants that are going to be is also, you should know how to behave. Uh, when you say the size of the animal, it also depends on what type of mineral or what type of fodder there are available, like legumes or anything, which help them grow big. No, no, it will be different, no. See, you understand this first. This is how you gauge. Then comes you decide uh, as I want milk. So then you will think, my small cow, I am in the Sayadris where it is too less brittle. So I have a smaller cow, but I need more milk. So you, what you do is you look at the a bigger cow which is in the brittle area and you try to bring him here. Or a person in Gujarat says, hey, your Kerala cows, good milk from him. He is told that their milk is so nutritious. It is because that cow is eating the grass of that area that the milk is that nutritious or it's different and when a gir cow eats the grass that is growing in Gujarat it's a different taste of the soil and when the tarparpas eat the savan grass in Rajasthan it's a different taste that means depending on the area the habitat changes the flora and fauna is different that is true so if we bring a cow from a brittle area to a non-brittle area over a period of generations the size of the animal would also decrease that changes will be there, but it is it is a dangerous thing to do. Don't do that because it is some nature's design. See, why did you bring the gear from there? Is it because you don't have animals here? It is because you fix the utility. That's what I'm telling you. Don't fix the utility on the animal. You look at the function. There starts the end of that animal. Then another thing is, another thing to gauge is wherever you have the bigger animals, you have the predator as lions. And wherever you have the smaller animals, 
you have the predatorous tigers. Because tigers are solitary, they hunt singly, and the uh, lion hunts in pack, groups, pack hunters there. So they will grow and hunt a bigger animal. And here he is enough to pick up a smaller one and go. In Gogoldam, if you go in our uh, Gogoldam area, you have the smaller bits. They can easily take up a calf and run. All the calves, all the cows they have eaten are just 200 kg animals only. But they have not attacked any uh, tar parkers there, which are 400 kg. He has not touched, even though they are walking in front of him, he has not touched them. So that everything matters. So you are trying to put a lion in the place of a tiger. That much damage you are doing by removing a girl from a place. Don't look at the utility, look at the function. Look at the function because you are part of the ecosystem. That is why I am teaching you ecosystem literacy. You should understand that. Then only look at the animal. Look for the functions of each and everything that is growing. I told you, you know, don't think that a weed is not useless. It is performing, it is covering the soil, it is also doing photosynthesis, it is also pumping carbon down. And as you know, every weed is either a food for the animals. So how can you call it a weed? It is a fodder. Or it is a medicinal plant. Something is there. So, thinking of competition in nature itself, that is what I wanted to prove or tell you that don't see competition in nature. There is only collaboration. There should be diversity. To put in those points only, I put this ecosystem literacy as a separate topic before going into cups. Because unless and until you understand the holistic farming and this ecosystem process, you cannot understand the remaining part of the class. Now when you go to the uh, milk aspect and the farming aspect, you will simply understand. You will never scratch. Why is he saying that? No. You will simply understand. To introduce you to the coming parts only, I have taken ecosystem literacy. I have tried to do this. And I hope you have gained some knowledge about the ecosystem. And at least you should know you are part of the ecosystem. You are not outside the ecosystem. You are also a pest. If you think that you don't be a pest in the ecosystem. And your role in the ecosystem is you are given the intelligence to understand the function of all the others along with you. And permit them to function, permit them to do their functions. That is your role in the ecosystem. See, as the mother, father of the nation has told, to forget how to dig the earth. And you tend the soil is to forget ourselves. If you do not know to how to manage your soil, it is like you do not know to live. That is what the father of the nation has told us. So I hope through this topic of ecosystem literacy, I have been able to give you the basics. That is the basic principles that each and every person who is venturing to start a farm or planning to keep cows should know. That is to be more precise, you should know the function of the livestock and the plants that you are growing on this one. Then only you will be having a sustainable or uh, 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 say you will be prosperous in, in your attempts. I hope I have been able to do this and in the coming classes we will now go into the real potential of cow's meal and then uh, the healing capacity of the how to manage the animals on land will all come in the next class. I hope this has you have understood it. अगर हमारा प्रयास आपको अच्छा लगा हो तो प्लीज इस वीडियो को लाइक करके शेयर करें और कुछ अच्छे सुझाव हो तो कमेंट कीजिए धन्यवाद